welcome back to the channel. We're out here in the bunker and today I'm going to show you how to assemble the SMLRO E5 Plus dual motor e-bike. Now this is a bike that I've had for a while. For the sake of this video I went ahead and disassembled it very close to how you guys would be receiving it from the factory. And I'm going to go over how to assemble it and give you guys some tips that might make it a little easier. I'll show you how to adjust the, the brakes and just really kind of go a once over on the bike to make sure it's safe um, for you guys to get out on your first ride. This bike comes very close to being assembled from the factory but there are six things that you will have to assemble and that is the seat, the pedals, um, the front fenders, the headlight, the bars and the front wheel and so I'll show you guys how to do that I usually go ahead and start with the seat to get that on you're going to want to go ahead and unlock the battery with the key and just go ahead and slide that out after you get the battery out you're going to want to go ahead and attach the seat this has six bolts that are going to attach it to the frame of the bike and I believe these are 10 millimeter Once you got the seat all tightened down, I usually go ahead and I start putting the bars on. This bike does come with tools and so you'll want to go ahead and loosen these bolts here on the headset um, so that you're able to get the bars on. Now you can go ahead and get the bars up into place. I'm going to go ahead and just snug these down. I'm not going to, I'm not going to really tighten them yet because um, we will have to make some slight adjustment to the bars um, once we get that front wheel on and I'll show you guys why. Really the most critical part of the assembly on this bike is getting the front wheel on. This front wheel does have a hub motor and so you have to be careful of the power wire and you have to be careful when you get the uh, brake rotor aligned with the caliper. And so I usually go ahead and I loosen the front caliper just a little bit so it's able to have a little bit of play in it. Once we get that wheel on, I'll show you guys how to adjust these brakes. The easiest way that I found to get this front wheel on is just to simply turn the bike upside down. Um, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get the front wheel on and be able to align it with the uh, brake caliper here. Once you get the wheel into the dropouts, you want to make sure that the power cable for the front hub motor is coming out of the axle kind of towards the rear. And the reason that you wouldn't want it in the front is it's not going to be as protected. And really just the way that you're going to run this cable, um, it's a lot easier to have it in the back of the shock tube here. Before you go ahead and tighten this down, you're going to want to put these little washers on. Um, you see they got kind of a little notch here and they can really only go on one way and that pretty much ensures um, that you have a place to tighten to and that's going to keep this wheel from moving left to right um, and loosening up and prematurely you know falling out of the dropouts. Once you get those on you're going to want to put the other washer do that to each side. Kind of wiggle the wheel from left to right to really make sure that it's seated into the dropouts. Turn the wheel, make sure that it spins freely and put the bolts on here and you can go ahead and tighten down the axle. Now remember we did loosen the front brake caliber. So I turn this I tap the front brake with my, my foot and now I can go ahead and tighten the caliper down. That's going to ensure that that caliper is aligned correctly and the bike is going to stop. 
Now that we got the front wheel on, we got the brakes tightened down, um, I'm going to flip the bike back over. Now that we got the front wheel on and we got the brake adjusted and everything tightened down, we're going to plug in the power to the front hub motor. And all the wiring on this bike has barrel connectors and they'll all have arrows on them. And you're going to just want to make sure that those arrows are lined up and you can plug that in, make sure it's nice and snug. The pedals on this bike do have stamps on here so you can find left and right. We're going to get those on. I took the bike off the stand. I've got all my weight on it and right now I'm just checking to make sure that that front wheel is going straight and that my bars are aligned right and you know I can I can lean them forward I can lean them back really kind of depending on how I like it and this feels pretty good right here and just go ahead and tighten these up and matter of fact I like to go around on just about all the components on this bike and just make sure that everything is nice and snug I normally leave the front fender off. I do a lot of trail riding, um, but just for this video, I'm gonna put this on just to show you guys. Um, this fender just slides through here, and then you're gonna take your headlight, you're gonna get that on, and this is just gonna bolt right through here. Get that on there. Got a washer, and then you're just going to get the nut on there. And you can go ahead and tighten that down. Now that we have everything assembled and tightened down on the bike, we can get the battery in. You're going to want to make sure that your battery is fully charged, um, you know, your first time out on this bike. You can test it. These lights here are going to be fully green and your charging port is right here on the side. And you can charge this on the bike um, or you can take it out if you like. And one thing to note, underneath this battery is a fuse and it has an on and off and it also has a button here for the tail light so if you're going to be riding at night you can turn that on this battery just slides right through the rear rack and it has a little rail system here that's going to guide the, the battery into the correct location to connect up with the controller and then you're going to want to go ahead and lock that in place and that's going to ensure that battery stays in there and it's not able to to slide out the back of the bike and i don't typically like ever leaving the key hanging in there i've seen people do it i usually take it out and typically i'll just leave it in a place um, where i know where it's at i don't like keeping it in my pocket sometimes you can lose it um, so just be careful of that key now that we got the battery in, it's fully charged. I just want to make sure the bike is functioning. I want to make sure the display works. And to turn this on, you're going to just, on the controller here, you're going to just hold that center button down. And that's going to boot everything up. And you can see that the display works here. I want to make sure the headlight works, the horn and everything seems to be working fine. Another thing you want to check is to make sure that the bike is pedaling, all your gears are working. Um, this has seven speeds and so you're just going to want to go through it and make sure that the chain is not skipping, go up and down in gears and these are usually pretty good from the factory. I have actually never had to make an adjustment uh, but if you needed to do so it's, it's easy enough to do back here 
um, with just a screwdriver. I have ridden this bike quite extensively and there's two things that I normally don't use with this bike and that's the center stand which hangs down a bit low and I ride a lot of fire roads, I ride a lot of real rough trails and having the extra ground clearance is um, kind of important for a lot of those areas and so I just leave it off. I've, I've got the other kickstand which I use and then I go ahead and I remove the front fender and the reason for that is a lot of those trails get, uh, they load up the tires with uh, rocks and gravel and it's kind of loud um, on some of those trails and so I just removed it. Um, I don't really need it but if you're going to do commuting you know around town you know in the city you probably want to have the front fender um, or if you're riding it in wet conditions uh, muddy conditions you know that's going to prevent anything from flinging up onto you uh, but it's just my own personal preference. I've had a lot of fun with the E5 in the past month. It's treated me really well. It's just a fast, fun bike that works really well on a lot of the fire roads and tight trails. Now I ride this bike fairly aggressively and part of preventative maintenance is just after each ride, you know, you want to check the spokes, you want to make sure that everything is tight and you want to make sure that you charge the battery right away. Don't let it sit for a long period of time discharged it's not good for it and by charging it and keeping up the health of it it's going to ensure that you're going to get the full 2000 cycles i hope i was able to share with you guys in good detail how to assemble this bike it's pretty straightforward pretty easy um, the hardest part for me the first time was getting that front wheel on but turning the bike upside down makes it way easier hopefully that'll help you guys um, really the main thing is just to make sure everything is tight and when you get out the first time on the bike you know go slow make sure that the brakes work make sure the gears shift properly and make sure that the bike is you know comfortable for you to ride you know as far as the controls um, and you can always make slight adjustments to those components if you need to but if you're missing parts you know if you have anything that's broken Definitely reach out to SMLRO through email. Let them know, um, you know, ask questions. Um, that's what they're there for, and I'm sure they'd be happy to help you guys. But if you have any questions, you know, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll try to answer them. Or if you have a request um, for a future video, um, I'm open to that. But I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoy your bike, and we'll see you on the next one.